is okay. Um, it's expected when people are taking out their normal environment and put into something that they didn't imagine would happen. And also with the news and um, with a lot of information that's circulating, it doesn't make it easy to, you know, um, relax because a lot of people are worried about their loved ones, the ones they can't actually go to, or even the people they're related to abroad and how situations are in different parts of the world. So yes, it, it is easy and um, nor should you get on hard on yourself trying to tell yourself that it's okay and you know um, that this isn't the type of normal that you should be used to or that you should be easily adapted to and because that's not the case. This is Fem Radio, a production of CJRU's Feminist Radio Collective. This week we have an exclusive interview with Mary Hawk, student and CEO of Sheen for She, an organization helping underprivileged women in Toronto. This is an exciting feature because it's Mary's second time on the show, and as the resident self-care expert, I couldn't think of a better time to bring her back on. We are talking about self-care and what that might look like during COVID-19, how COVID-19 is impacting Toronto's vulnerable and organizations that serve them, like Sheen for Sheet, and what we can do to help each other get through this. So enjoy the conversation. So for people that might be new to the show, do you mind just giving us like a quick overview of Sheen for Sheet before we start? Sure. So, um, the Sheen for Sheep Foundation is a Canadian nonprofit, and we are a women's organization trying to solve women's issues with self care services. And we're trying to spread a message that um, self care is very important for underprivileged women in our society because they often neglect their basic needs and themselves and undervalue their importance. So then their contributions don't often reflect how they see themselves. So, for example, if we see um, women who are on the brink of poverty, they don't think about themselves first. Instead, they're more focused on the challenges they're facing. So if we bring in this concept of the importance of actually taking care of yourself um, before you worry about anything that comes after in your life, then you can actually try to shape up and improve what will come. And this way you won't have to undervalue yourself and um, constantly fall because of what other people tell you and you'll have that confidence to stand up for yourself and have um, pride in what you do. So what we're um, doing at the foundation is providing self-care services in four forms. The first one is healing circles. So it's basically a friendship group where all of our women come together to tell their stories. Oftentimes these women are not heard and a lot of people don't have time to you know, even understand the situations, the backgrounds that they're coming from. So it offers them a unique opportunity to talk and sort of let it out, you know, just say it and um, relieve themselves of whatever burden or stress they were feeling. Um, in the healing circles, we also have professionals such as like lawyers or doctors join in and sort of join the conversation, guide the dialogue and provide their expertise. And because these profession, these professionals are do- not normally um, available um, to women, they when they come in, it really you know changes up the way they want to share their questions and um, sort of show their stories in a way that there might be there might be a space for them to ask for help or um, sort of, you know, get those, um, get uh, valuable advice from those um, people. The next one that we offer is aesthetics. So it's um, basically um, facials, manicures, pedicures. We have microderm compression and um, laser hair removal. Um, We do all this because we want to um, improve not only what's on the surface, but we understand how it can affect what's inside of us. Sometimes, for example, there are women who are coming from abusive relationships and they have scars or things that um, they've 
brought back from their experiences and we want to give them a new face so that they don't have to answer questions when they go for a job interview regarding their past relationships that they don't want to talk about and also because we know that when a woman is pampered and she's made to feel like she is a queen then uh, she will carry those emotions and that passion for herself wherever she goes and that will fuel her um sort of energy towards anything that she wants to do the other thing that we offer is self-defense training so it's pretty self-explanatory we um, teach them how to defend themselves in situations that can turn into a possible um possible like life and death sort of situations but also we teach them that self-defense is something that you're defending yourself against bad health you're defending yourself against um something that's not affecting your mind very well you're getting rid of stress anxiety depression or you're trying to alleviate any of things that are clogging your mind and you just want to get a straight focus towards your goal so um we offer meditation yoga and try to get them onto a track where they feel more comfortable about their bodies but also about their skills to defend themselves the last thing we offer is self-care training and the self-care training offers makeup skincare tutorials and we have we have a professional element to this as well so then we have mock interviews we check resumes cover letters and get them job ready we do image consultancy to prepare them for the workplace and to make sure that they know how to carry themselves in that kind of environment and to excel in their careers they know exactly what skills and what job etiquette takes them there so that's that's what the Sheen Christian Foundation is about yeah so it's really sort of like there's so many moving parts to this organization and you're the founder right yes and you're also a student which is crazy so what are you studying um so I'm doing a double uh, major in psychology and political science um yeah, it's, uh, and I'm also trying to learn French at the same time, so I'm hoping to graduate with a French certificate. Oh, nice. And yeah. I guess, did the psychology or your majors play into starting this for you at all? Um, I think that maybe not so much starting it, but I feel like it's really helped me um, live into it. Sort of, I'm getting into the flow of understanding how women you know, under, the way they think about their environments and the way they act. And I'm, I'm beginning to understand them more than I thought that I already knew them. And being a woman myself, I didn't know that there was so much to learn because then it's, you know, sort of presumptions that you know about your own gender. But when you say psychology, it becomes quite uh, specialized and you realize things you didn't know before. So I guess it makes me more um, understanding of the women that I work with. And it definitely helps when I work with the organization so yeah and yeah perfect so this is actually your second time on Femme Radio um, with us so welcome back uh, I thought in you know with everything going on having someone focused on self-care would be like perfect for this episode so um, I thought of you obviously <laughs> Yeah, thanks for thinking of me. Um, yeah, self-care is no doubt something that is priceless right now, and it's giving us all um, a chance to think about how this um, this thing that is normally just reserved for time off or vacation is becoming such a part of our daily lives that we can't ignore. Yeah, why why right now is self-care so important? Well, um, the coronavirus uh, has given us a unique opportunity to um, really sit with ourselves and understand in isolation, even in quarantine, that we are important. Um, and it's because we, we're normally so focused on what's going on uh, besides ourselves, like our jobs, our careers, and we don't think about how, how we're own beings can be affected if we don't pay attention to ourselves at all. Um, but with the coronavirus, we are thinking more about hygiene and we'll focus on improving how we can, how our actions can impact others. And we need to make sure that we have cut off like ourselves from people that we normally meet, like our friends or uh, colleagues. So 
Right now, self-care is extremely important because we need to uh, start becoming conscious about our health practices, how much we wash our hands, how much we, you know, take part in things that uh, keep germs away from us, and also how we try to uh, collaborate with others in a distant way, like the like the way we're doing an interview right now. So these are things that are a little bit new because we in our in our regular lives we are required to go in person but um yeah there are a lot of things a lot of new things to learn from this situation but um self-care is definitely translating to hygiene for now so i guess what's surprising me about what you're saying is that self-care isn't really it is the way that we looked at it before this but there's also this new component in that everything you're doing for yourself right now to keep yourself safe can be counted as self-care, is that right? Um, definitely, because you're keeping away from, uh, when you're keeping away from other people, you're actually doing something that is mandatory right now, because uh, we, wanna, we wanna make sure that we stay connected while being away from each other, which is not so connected in terms of distance. But um, hygiene has always been a part of self-care. It's not something new, but now it's become a focus. And when we think about, for example, um, for example, one of the things that we do is um, skincare, right? And uh, we we always begin with uh, trying to uh, begin our faces like sort of fresh by cleansing, and um, that would be one of the first steps that you take when you're uh, applying makeup or one of the first things that you would do when you're t uh, starting something new you would just cleanse and sort of not in a way that of course you wash your face but also just clear off something or um, get clean this is all hygiene and when we when we begin self-care it always starts at this we want to start new we want to start fresh so right now in in this time Hygiene has sort of come to the forefront of what self-care means, and not just self-care for you, but also self, uh, also care for others. Yeah, and then there is that component of it where you're still trying to take care of yourself, obviously mentally as well, because this can be very tough on some people. Definitely. Um, when right now, uh, because a lot of people are in isolation, it's 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 normal to expect that there be more anxiety and uh, more worry and stress among people because we have been taken away from what's normal to us, our normal routines and normal places, normal people that we were accustomed to meeting on a daily basis. So now we would expect that. Um, our feelings are changing and we're trying to adapt to this environment where we're not used to living all hours for a day. So it's important for us to be kind to ourselves and sort of take that time to meditate and find out how you can adapt to this situation in the best way possible. So for your mental health, for your well-being, it's important that you don't uh, take this time as a vacation, that you stick to your schedule so that you don't feel uh, very like it doesn't feel like something that is that's not your life anymore because our work has to continue a lot of people have taken uh, their jobs online and now they're continuing um, in a virtual way but um, if we if we start to take this as something that's disrupt, disrupting our routines and we're uh, waking up late we're not taking care of ourselves or we're not eating right or we're taking on new bad habits then it's going to turn into something that we're going to come out of worse after all of this so when we return to what's normal for us we won't be the best of ourselves so we want to keep ourselves maintained and this is the, how we can also nourish our minds and make sure that we prepare ourselves for the future even however unpredictable it might be we are ready for it and we're not letting ourselves go down um, down the slide we're letting our you know we, we the self-development portion should always be present and we shouldn't let ourselves walk away from uh, our professional lives and uh, our routines that we're used to and also make sure that we keep up with healthy habits. Um, all of this can be hard to keep up because you might think how hard it is to um, 
um, maintain such a routine that you're used to because you, you're in a new environment and you have new challenges at home, you have, you're encountering different things, but uh, if we try hard to make sure that we don't waver from this standard or this bar that we create for ourselves, then it, we're doing ourselves a favor by being uh, conscious of how our actions um, can sort of help us bring this kind of normalcy to our lives and uh, make sure that our future doesn't bring too much change for us. Yeah, um, and I like how you mentioned the part about a lot of people taking their jobs online because that actually kind of leads me into a question that I had, which is obviously you spend a lot of time working with some of the more vulnerable people in Toronto. So how is COVID-19 impacting those people that you would normally be helping? So um, th this situation is quite complex. It's very complicated because there are so many women and they have many different situations, some that we can't even you know, begin to imagine. But if you bring about some of the most, uh, some things that you can, uh, like some of the most things that are um, more noticeable, for example, um, women in shelters, it's hard to keep up with social distancing and hygiene practices when there are several women in one spot and um, the resources can be limited and uh, where they're coming from, uh, the reasons why they're in the shelters can, um, on top of that, be a challenge for them to cope with. So I think that um, when we think about women in shelters and or women uh, who are homeless, then it can be something really unique, and uh, we need to we need to think about how um, we can accommodate these women to standards that we have at home. So the best things that they can do is sort of keep up with their hygiene as much as they can wash their hands frequently, keep away from people as much as they can, keep at least two meters distance from anyone who's near them, and make sure that they find places that are clean and try to help help out with the environment, help out with uh, the people that are with them, to, to stay sort of organized in the system, create an organized system in which they can maintain hygiene practices and uh, support each other without getting too close. Um, another situation that we can think about that the COVID-19 uh, virus sort of brings about women that we work with is domestic violence. A lot of women are at home right now, and um, when we think about the situations that they were already facing when they came to this organization, um, now they are sort of isolated from the community and uh, in an environment that they don't feel comfortable in. So it, I think that this is this time that they're spending in isolation could increase the amount of domestic violence they face or and it can it can uh, it can worsen it can worsen for them. However, what they can do to improve it is take this time as an opportunity to think about their situations, evaluate what they're going through and plan what's going to, uh, what they can do, um, what they can do coming out of this. I think a lot of the times what we need is just time with ourselves to uh, plan out what our future can hold for us if we take a certain step and if we find the courage to take an action that can help us escape from a situation. Um, the other thing is that resources uh, such as shelters but also helplines are available for women so uh, if, the, if the need be then uh, it's definitely a route that they should look out for and uh, never feel that they even in this isolation are alone because a lot of things are going on in social media and how to connect with people even at a distance so this is something new that our communities don't normally use but um, now that this is our only way our only means of communication i think that um, especially vulnerable women um, either in their homes shelters on the streets we can use and should try to reach out to people even if it's just online to let them know about their situations and um, plan out their next steps to use this time wisely, even if it's just to meditate and care for themselves, to prepare them and strengthen their souls so that they don't break down. Yeah, so it's definitely different depending on the situation, but I think you've thought about it a lot and there's a lot of interesting tips that you've provided there about how it's really going to those 
how it's really impacting those people in our community that are the most vulnerable during this time. Um, and what about the services that you provide at Sheen for Sheen? How has COVID-19 been impacting your business? So our organization, unfortunately, had to stop all our programming because it's all in person and um, we, we had to do this, obviously, because um, we didn't want to spread anything and we wanted to make sure that we are doing what's in the best interest of our queens. Uh, so fortunately, we are, again, using this uh, communication. Uh, we're transferring all of our communications online. So we're checking in with everyone, with all of the women that we work with, and we're emailing them. We're also uh, sending in calls to make sure how uh, everything's going, to see if they're all right, if they need anything, how they're feeling, if they want to talk. There's so much to share when it comes to just even online communication because whether you're on the phone with someone or you're just uh, writing uh, through an email it gives them a chance to connect with the organization and um, it's a form of acknowledgement that someone is there for you even in this time when uh, you're technically isolated so if you're if they're given a chance to express how they're feeling you know share their emotions and uh, tell us if, if they need anything then we can direct them to resources such as like helplines and um or resources to get food or where they can uh, go to seek help. So even though um, we are not there with them in person, it gives them an out, um, sort of um, a source that they can always be in touch with. So we don't want to lose that uh, connection. And um, this is all we can do right now, but we hope that uh, by doing so, we are, um, we are in this with them, even though we are away. Um, so, yeah, uh, the organization is just transferring to online and phone communication, and we hope that um, after all this is done, we will come out of it with relationships that are stronger because we've had that chat, um, and we've had that uh, sort of those close moments um, during these hard times, and we can move forward and grow together after all this is done and continue with our programming in a progressive way. Yeah, so you're really still trying to be there for the women that you work with as much as you can without actually being there. Exactly. Um, and I guess, what do you, what would you say to some people who might be having trouble getting into those routines that you mentioned earlier, or really just having trouble sort of relaxing and easing into the situation? Um, I would first of all tell them that it's okay. Um, it's expected when people are taken out of their normal environment and put into something that they didn't imagine would happen. And also with the news and um, with a lot of information that's circulating, it doesn't make it easy to you know um, relax because a lot of people are worried about their loved ones, the ones they can't actually go to, or even the people they're related to abroad and how situations are in different parts of the world. So yes, it, it isn't easy. and. Um, um, nor should you get on hard on yourself trying to tell yourself that it's okay and you know um, that this isn't the type of normal that you should be used to or that you should be easily adapting to and because that's not the case um, uh, we should be kind to ourselves again and um, the first part of problem solving is acknowledging that there is a problem and then trying to move forward from it um, with self-care, an important part of it is just acknowledging the situation. After that, just taking time to think about how your daily routine is impacted and making sure that you know what you can do um, during the day. You know, don't spend your time uh, just wasting away. Don't give up on yourself or your work. Don't feel like any like what is going on is going to make it impossible for you to continue. Um, Everything is manageable because if you break it down into, um, if you break your day into chunks where you just give time to yourself and you, um, you know, another another chunk of your day can be just taking care of yourself. Um, another part can be doing something that you love. If you keep yourself engaged and do things that you 
if that makes you feel better, then you will definitely start enjoying this time and it can take away from all the negatives that are being thrown at us at this time. But um, another also very important thing is to stay connected with the people that you care about. So even just a phone call or um, something like, you know, an email can make a difference because it shows them that you are still thinking about them and they should also try to make themselves feel better and do things that they enjoy doing. Um, another thing that I'd like to mention is that a lot of um, great organizations and great causes are taking to social media to um, spread messages about how you can take care of yourself. So she for she is also writing your um, coronavirus self-care guide and we have a series um, on Instagram right now about how you can take care of yourself, creative ways to sort of adapt to the situation. So um, I think that even though spending too much time on social media is not good for you you should go out and see positive messages instead of um, the negative ones that are out there about um, you know people suffering and um, everything that's going on you know you should try to lighten yourself and also engage yourself with these messages you know comment and share and try to see how you can implement some of the advice that you're being uh, that you're being sort of if you're encountering then actually put it into use so um that's that's something we can do and also one other thing that social media reminds me is that uh, right now is also a very good time to evaluate the people that you follow and um sort of keep up to date with because if you're surrounded by negative uh, people that you don't like hearing from or that just you know bring dark clouds over your day and stop you from moving on then it's time to reevaluate those choices and um sitting at home is, you know by yourself away from all these in-person connections is a great way to do it and also to improve your mood and get you back into um something that's progressive and also good for you yeah and i like the point about social media because i think a lot of people sort of turning to social media now just out of boredom right so making sure that when you are spending so much time on it that it's a positive environment for you I think is very very important so thank you for suggesting that um is there anything people can do right now to help organizations like Sheen for She and other organizations across Toronto navigate through this Um, So normally I would say get involved, you know, volunteer, donate, but right now um, (laughs) there's no, um, there's no way that we can actually, you know, just, uh, we we can't, uh, we can't really get ourselves involved or linked up with organizations and missions even if we care about them. So we... I would, I would seriously suggest that people look for online opportunities if they are really willing to lend a hand. Um, for example, she or she has several online volunteer opportunities that are um, virtual all year round, so even in situations um, that are not like this. So if they really do want to uh, lend a helping hand during this time, then um, this is a fantastic way to do it. Another is to show that they care and they, and they have... Um, well, oh, sorry, I was, <laughs> I was talking about how we can um, sort of help organizations um, from a distance. So um, we, when, we, when we are on social media and we're talking to our friends and we are spreading a lot of different messages, even through ourselves because of our contributions that we're making um, in, like, when we're talking to our friends and family or when we're sharing posts on social media, we have a lot of opportunities to spread the same messages and sort of spread awareness about the organizations that are working through this coronavirus. And um, a lot of it is just taking care of yourself as well because um, a lot of, like I've been reading a lot about how our healthcare professionals are, you know, really facing everything up front and taking the risk into their own hands and, and making us feel better. Um, it's important for us to do the same with ourselves and stay home, stay clean, and make sure that we don't do anything that jeopardizes other people's lives. And 
Another thing people can do is to stay active and um, aware of what their organizations are doing to support themselves. A lot of nonprofits are really in a crisis right now because of their team, the people they serve are really unavailable. And the amount of funding that we are normally, that we normally need to support ourselves and keep ourselves running is becoming uh, really um, out of out of reach because there's so many of us and we're all trying to do good work but uh, the amount of resources that are allocated to support all of us some especially at this time um, can be something that puts us um, a step back from where we want to be so if um, people really want to help out um, it's, it's it goes a long way to even share some of the work that we're doing and um, talk about how other people can support us such as GoFundMe's um, and if they if they you know share it you know throughout the situation in the future how we can sort of get people to know about us and as people come back on their feet come out of the situation at least they'll have a little bit of a background to see hey you know these organizations really came to the forefront they were working out through the coronavirus I want to get involved um, there are so many ways to do it and it's just a way to do some future planning about um, what we can do to uh, stay together and stay connected so um, also with the other things just social media again I mean it's something that we're using so much I can't I just can't stay off the topic but um, another thing with social media is just um, acknowledging to the organizations that you are with them even if it's just virtual support saying that you know um, I agree with this and you know trying to contribute to what they're doing and sharing your ideas and thoughts because a lot of the community that you um, that follow you that um, see you as an influencer will adopt the same things that um, we can adapt the same things that uh, the people that we like or follow um, are appreciating so for example if someone you know goes ahead and says you know i'm following the self-care routine and i'm taking care of myself by doing these steps and i'm following what this organization is saying then they're not only um voicing what they do but uh, they're also showing people that this is something that you should give a shot to as well you should try this it's not impossible and i'm doing this you can do it too so it's really that virtual support and sharing um, the information and making sure that um, you keep these organizations in mind so that in the future when we do have an opportunity to get back on our feet get our lives back together um, we will have these organizations in our mind and sort of get involved with them. So this is a good opportunity for people to see which organizations really line up with their values. And um, this can be tough to do when you're caught up with so many tasks at work or with your life otherwise. So um, yeah, this is how people get involved. And um, I really hope that something good can come out of it and it can leave um, after all this is gone. It'll leave our communities more connected and um, more willing to collaborate. Yeah, for sure. And I think that the point about community is an important point that you keep coming back to. So I think that's maybe one of the biggest takeaways is that it's important to stay a community during this time. Um, so I wanted to thank you so much for coming back onto the show and sharing your advice with us. I know um, you're probably very busy in adapting the business to everything that's going on. So I wanted to say thank you again. And um, yeah. Yeah, no problem. And thank you so much for having me. Um, this is this was a really important conversation, and I believe that if we continue to spread um, positive messages such as this, and, you know, show people that they're not alone even in this quarantine, then um, it's it, it will spread as <laughs> it'll be something that people pick up, and they won't feel um, you know too bad about this, and that they'll find recovery and they'll find wellness even in this situation because. Um, we, you know, the most of us are at home and we are fortunate enough to have this, um, this, uh, you know, accommodation to ourselves and have this environment, but we must also acknowledge what's going on with the vulnerable populations of women and men in our communities. And if we're aware of that, then 
um, that can really help power our actions and begin to understand how fortunate we are and also what we can do to support them. So thanks for having this conversation with me, Sophia. And I hope that we've uh, sort of accomplished our mission of touching people's hearts and helping them understand how they can get through the situation. And that was this week's feature story. I hope everyone learned something new and has some new ways to get through this. The Sheen for She website is a great place to get more info and resources. And the link for that will be in the description box of Fem Radio on all podcast platforms.